Once again, welcome to the Freedom Lighthouse Center. And it's so good to be here, and it's so good to be with you guys. It is always a joy. It's an honor for me to be here. I thoroughly enjoy the fellowship and the ladyship. Yes. And uh, with that in mind, Ashley, would you lead us in prayer? So good morning, Jesus, Lord. We just thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, and we thank you that um, um, we're able to enter in, Lord, into your presence, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you just open up our mind, Lord, to be able to receive from Pastor Harry, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for him, Lord, and I ask you to bless him exceedingly and abundantly above all that he can ask and think, Lord, with pouring into us, Lord, and we ask this in your name, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We're on the sixth beatitude. And if you have this, you can kind of see the overall, and it kind of helps that way. In any event, um, what are, without looking at the chart, what are the ones that go before? These are in order. You can't have the sixth beatitude if you don't have the first five. And so we begin with what? Blessed are the poor in, spirit. poor in spirit. And how would you put that in your words? What is the word for poor in spirit? Uh, I'm not asking for what the Greek word is or anything like that. <laughs> what I want to know is, humble. what is it? Good, humble, humble. Anything else? Broken. Broken, great, good. Right. Powerless. I like that word. Yeah. I like that word because if I say I'm poor in spirit, what is the spirit? The spirit is the energy. And if I don't have energy, I'm powerless. That's right. Okay, but that's what brings me to humble. Because if I can't do it, then I have to ask for help. Yes. So the next one, after being poor in spirit, is what? Mourn. 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 What am I mourning? Who I used to be. Sin, okay. <laughs> Somebody else's sin? <laughs> you're, you're, you're mourning Joel's sin, aren't you? <laughs> it's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's always, it's always easier <laughs> to, to mourn the sin of the leaders of our country, right? Mm, right? It's always easier to mourn over somebody else's bad behavior. Tell right. the truth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Somebody said something else. Besides mourning for sin? Over yourself. Old self. Okay, my old self. My old self. Oh, but did your old self pass away? Yeah, Joe, no. when Rachel oh, said, you look so good today. <laughs> 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 so is yesterday still with you? No, it's gone. No, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Absolutely gone. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. The only problem is you're still in the body. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's right. Okay, so there is... A two nature that you have. You have the flesh nature and you have the spirit nature. You're either walking in the flesh or you're walking in the spirit. And you can mourn because not only what you did 5, 10, 15 years ago, and none of you in this room are old enough, right? 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. In any event, if you're mourning today because we can easily look back and say, oh, what a scoundrel I was before I came to the lighthouse. What a scoundrel I was before I got sober. What a scoundrel. What a sinner. What a wretch. What a wicked. What a hateful person I was before I became a Christian. Oh, are you still? Yes. Yes, yes and no. Yeah. It's a yes and no, isn't it? Yes. Some days you do wake up miserable. Yeah. And other days you let him sleep. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. So in any event, you, you, you I have see. to stir my humanity up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, some of you are still awake. That extra hour didn't help you, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so mourning, mourning for what's going on right now. Did you sin this past week? Yes. yes. I'm not going to ask you where. You don't have to confess to me. <laughs> you need to talk to God, but yeah. the fact of the matter is all of us have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all do. 
We all let God down. We all let ourselves down. We all embarrass ourselves. We've all done that. We've all done stupid, right? Yes, yeah, for sure. All right. Do you mourn over that? Yeah. yeah. Good. Because that's what it is. Blessed are, it's present tense, the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. What's the next one? Meek. Meek. Ah. Now, what's that word mean? Strength under control. Good. I like that. I can't think of a better definition. Strength <laughs> under control. So what kind of strength do you have? Samson. Do you have strength? <laughs> you have what now? Samson's strength. Samson's strength. Sounds like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about the Samson of the old. But he was strong in what? The flesh. In, in, the, flesh. Okay, in the flesh. Are some of you strong in the flesh? Yes. Of course you are. Some of you can reach things I can't. <laughs> some of you have strength I don't have. Some of you can get anchovies. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's things. Some of you have a gift in music. Yeah. Really, Victoria, Victoria you're really gifted. I do sing you. I see you in the praise team, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are singing, right? Yes, sir. You do have a good voice, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's a strength. But it's strength under whose control? God. You see, before you took your talents, your gifts, your abilities, and whatever it was that you considered an asset, and, and it was under whose control? The enemies. The enemies. The enemies. Oh my God. And you didn't do a very good job, did you? No. No. Okay. So that's what that means. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. And that's, by the way, present tense, still meek, under control, under the control of the Spirit of God. What's the fourth one? Hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst. Not even 12 o'clock yet. What are we talking about? That I want more of the Lord. I want more of who He is okay. on the inside Good. of me to come out. Good. So what is righteousness? What is that? Right standing. right standing. Right standing. Do you really want to be right with God? Yes. 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 And that hungering, that thirsting, that, that boy, I will not forget the time, Cleftora, you told us about a time you were hungry. Mm. Uh, I've never been that hungry. That, that's the kind of hungering and thirsting we're talking about for right standing with God. Today, all right, those first four of the eight Beatitudes are all God's working in me. Now, the last four are my working in relationship to the world. <clears throat> What's number five? We looked at it last week. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be merciful? Okay, that is so important that we are merciful to others as God has been merciful to us. What is one place where you may have pled for mercy? And I mean pled. The judge? The judge. Got it. Because when you plead for mercy, what are you also admitting? That I'm guilty. You're admitting guilt. You only plead for mercy when you know you're wrong. Yeah. Okay? That's good. We plead for justice when somebody else did something wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. and we want to be made right. But that's not what it's about. The heart of God is compassion, caring more about someone else than we care about ourselves. And therefore, when someone does us wrong, anybody do you wrong this week? You weren't on the you weren't on the highway very much then, were you? <laughs> you get on the highway, somebody's going to cut you off. Somebody's going to do something that's Sooner going to cut. That's right. Sooner or later. I mean, okay. In our mind, we can always think somebody's done us wrong. We can justify it. In our and that's mind. that's right. <laughs> Come on, Queen Tori. That's right. And so mercy is tagged with forgiveness. That's right. Forgiveness. And so it's so important that you forgive. And so with that in mind, how many of you memorized St. Francis of Assisi's prayer? 
No. 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 Any yeses? Sorry, sir. No. Sorry doesn't cut it. <laughs> Give us mercy. <laughs> you need mercy. <laughs> All right, Carol. Now it's your oh, your yeah. turn. You can okay. release these. And by the way, whatever we have here, if you text me online and you just simply want something that I'm handing out, you can have it. This is a prayer of St. Francis, and I worked on it last night and, and created it into something you can put on the wall. Okay? Frame it. Yes. St. Francis is a monk. And you maybe have heard of the Franciscans. That's named after St. Francis of Assisi. He lived in the 1100s to the early 1200s. So he lived about 900 years ago. He was a very wealthy man. He was born into a wealthy family and he gave up all of that. And if you see sometimes statues or pictures of St. Francis, there's usually birds and animals around them because he really was gentle with nature and everyone knew him. There's a famous story of another monk who asked St. Francis, how is it that you're not very handsome? You're not very intelligent. You're not wealthy, not here. And yet the whole world comes after you. Everybody wants to see you. And St. Francis said, when God looked down from the heavens and he was looking for the least of all his creation. Wow. The one less worthy of all, he chose me. <laughs> one of the weird. things he is known best for, and he has written a lot, is this prayer. Wow. And I would encourage you to memorize it. Yes. Next week we'll be looking at Blessed Are the Peacemakers. So it goes like this, and it's easy to remember. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. In Romans chapter 6, the Bible says that our members are instruments, either of righteousness or unrighteousness. Your tongue, your eyes, your hands, your feet, all that you are. Lord, make me an instrument of of your peace. Amen. Where there is hatred, let me sow what? Love. Love. Where there is injury, what? Pardon. Where there is doubt, what? Faith. Where there is despair, hope. hope. Where there is darkness, life. Where there is sadness, sadness. Joy. 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 Okay, now notice in the first, if you want to memorize it, easy to do. You begin, first of all, looking at um, hatred, H, I, three Ds, and an S, hids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Easy to remember. That's you begin good. with, and it begins with love, and then notice pardon, faith, and hope. Faith, hope, and love. They're right there. So it's easy to remember. Then he goes, O oh, divine master, grant that I might not so much cease, uh, uh, seek to be consoled. What's the word console mean? Comfort. Comfort. As to console, to be understood as to what? Understand. To be loved. As to be loved. And too often times in marriage, we go into marriage looking for someone to love us. And it's got to be the other way around. And then he says the reason war, for, the reason why. For it is in giving, it is in pardoning, that we are pardoned. It is in dying, that we are born to eternal life. And it is not just physically dying. You don't get eternal life when you die. You got eternal life when you receive Jesus as your Savior. But what he is talking about here is dying to self. And that's happening right now. You did that a long time ago, didn't you? 
You did that when you met Christ. You recognized that you were a poor master. You were a poor captain of your soul. And you needed a Savior. Okay? That's yours? Thank you, sir. Oh, you're more than welcome. Okay. So we've covered now... We have the Beatitudes, the first four. We went to you last week, and that was blessed are the, the merciful. And now what is today? The pure in heart. The pure in heart. Wow. Well, we got to deal with a couple of words here. What does the word pure mean? To you, what does it mean? Clean. 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 Okay. Okay, something can be clean, but not pure. That's true. Right? Joel. Dirty. This is a shekel. The shekel is, uh, by the way, back in the times of our Lord, a half shekel would be used so that you could go to the temple and worship. You had to offer something, and so it was a half shekel. How much do you think that's worth? It's It's got silver on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on it. Oh, silver on it. Would you like somebody, your future husband, to give you a 24 carat cubic sarcona no. with... <laughs> Gold plated. With that's gold plated. No. no. Oh, why not? Because what do you that's think not that's pure. Worth? Joel, nothing. It you got it. Nothing. It, it's really not worth anything. It's a facsimile. And what do you think? If you were to cut that or break that in half, it's probably like pig metal on the inside. It's got pig metal. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's called pig metal. That's yeah. putting the pigs down. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 is, it is not pure. Now, if it was pure silver and it was 2,000 years old, I'll tell you, it's between six to $30,000. Wow. Wow. And I wouldn't have given it to Joel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you get the idea, don't you? Yes. Okay. You asked what is pure, um, untainted? Untainted. Okay, what does taint mean? Still tainted. What? Contaminated. Contaminated. How do you get pure something? If you Fire. want a metal. What? Fire. 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 You've got to put... If you've got gold, and it's interesting, if you collect coins, the best you can get is 99.9% .9 silver. If you're buying a silver coin, an American Eagle, that's what you're going to get, 99.9. .9. Why isn't it 100%? Well, it's so soft. You can't ever fully get all the impurities out. You can't out. ever fully get all of the, the impurities out. Okay. okay? So God wants you to be pure. Oh, wow. Did you ever see a letter and it was signed sincerely? Yes. Yours. You ever get one of those? Yes. Why do they put sincere? Always that. Does that mean that they're insincere and they don't put it? <laughs> What's that mean? And, and I never could figure out why it's mine when they don't even know me and they're writing sincerely yours. Why? We're not even in a relationship yet. Right. <laughs> so what does that mean? What does sincere mean? Like in truth? Like, I'm like, sincere about it. I'm truthful. With I'm truthful. Life. Okay, we're coming close to this word pure again. It's actually a Latin word. Sincera. And sincera was used for marble cutters back in the days of Julius Caesar and the time of our Lord. Marble cutters were very popular. If you've ever been to the Middle East or been to Rome and Greece, lots of buildings are solid marble, beautiful. But if the marble cutter was making, let's say, a gravestone for you, 
and he got just to the very end, that last letter, it cracked. Wow. Cracked. Mm. What could he do about it? Get frustrated. You get frustrated? He loses marbles? <laughs> <laughs> no, what did he do? He put wax on it. He put wax on it, and the wax would go into the marble, and it was great. You bought it, take it home, put it in your backyard, bury your father, until the sun came out. Then what happens? It melts the wax, and then what happens? Then you see the imperfections. When the marble cutters want to sell a marble whatever, bless you. bless you, without wax, they would put on it sincera. It meant, God bless you again. You're looking for a second blessing. I am. <laughs> he would put on it sincera, meaning without wax. Ah. Uh. And that got then put on letters wow. that we, 2,000 years later, wow. still say there is nothing in this letter that is false. I have written, and that's why, sincerely, yours. It's not about a relationship. They're just simply saying there is nothing I have written that is untruthful. Oh, wow. I wonder how many people actually know no, well, you do. You. <laughs> you do. That's right. It's, you know, that's a very good point. There's so many words that we say on a regular basis that we have no idea what they mean. Right. That's right. Okay, so now the Bible says, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. What do you think it says? It's about the heart. Jeremiah what? Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is... Desperately wicked. Okay. Deceitful. There we go with the word sincera. Very false. Deceitful above all things. All things meaning more deceitful than a snake. Deceitful above all things and then desperately. Desperate. Desperately what? Wicked. Wicked. What's wicked mean? Twisted. Twisted. Okay. Okay. That, that's right. Okay. So now, if your heart is desperately wicked, then how do you get a pure heart? You invite the Lord into it. You have to invite the Lord into it. Can you make your heart pure? No. no. I don't. No. He can when he says to take up stone heart and give you a heart of Okay, that's also in Jeremiah. In fact, at Jeremiah 31, when he says, I will give you a new covenant, and I will replace the old covenant with a covenant where I will give you, and it will be in his blood, a new heart. God saw in Genesis chapter 6 that the wickedness of man and the imaginations of man were wicked continually. So what did God do? He gave his son. He gave his son, but what did he do? Genesis 6. Isn't that Sodom and Gomorrah where he destroyed the city? No, that would be a little later. This is where the flood comes. Okay? But Jesus said, Matthew chapter 19, to the Pharisees, your heart, out of the heart, come the issues of life. And it's not just, and he will say, and he has said it several times, that what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. So you don't need a stethoscope to know if you've got a dirty heart or not. Right, right, right. Okay? Listen to what you're saying. And listen to other people. I wrote a paper last night where I, I thought as I was reading what they had said that they had made a confession. The very words that 
they say, if a person says, well, I would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you didn't even ask about that. <laughs> they're bringing it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if they're bringing it up, right. and it was not brought up before, then why did they bring it up? Yeah. Right. That's called a confession, by the way. Yeah. yeah. But where did that come from? Out of the heart. It came from out of the heart. It came from a guilty heart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever read Edgar Allan Poe? Yes. Yeah, the telltale heart. Tell tale heart. Oh, he was telling on all tales. This is a guy that had murdered someone. I think it was his wife. The detective comes. You may know that Edgar Allan Poe lived in Baltimore. The football team that plays in Baltimore are the Ravens. Why are they the Ravens? Wow. Because, and I hear you thinking. The bird. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Quo the raven nevermore. Where is Shakespeare now? <laughs> Rolling over in his grave. <laughs> okay, the telltale heart. Telltale heart is when this man has now a detective. The detective comes into the house. And so he's taking... You only get two blessings. You only get three. <laughs> and so he comes into the house. The man is standing in a particular place. The, the detective is going all over the house. This man, however, is standing in one place. He's refusing to leave this one place. The detective goes into another room. He doesn't go in the other room. He stands right where he's standing. Where do you think the body is? Under his feet. Under his feet. In other words, the very place was projected by his guilt. The telltale heart tells on itself. Yes, it does. Okay? Yes. Now, what did God do when he saw the wickedness of man? He washed it. And that's what the Pharisees were doing. Jesus called them whited sepulchers. Why? Because on the outside, washing, they look great. What was on the inside? Dirt. Dead men's bones and dirt. That's right. Covering a lot of dirt. What did Pontius Pilate do? Wash his hands. Why did he wash his hands? Because he didn't want to be found guilty. That's right. What did Lady Macbeth? I want to go to Shakespeare. I want to leave Joel out. What did Lady Macbeth do? Out, out, damn spot. You're allowed to say that here at the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's just okay. quoting Shakespeare. <laughs> just quoting Shakespeare. Okay, you get the point. That's exactly. And can, by the way, can washing wipe out the damnation of the heart? No. 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 Notice now, God judges the earth twice. The first time. It was the flesh. What's the second time he's going to, and it's going to, judge the earth? And the whole of the universe, the whole of the cosmos. How's he going to do it? What's the second judgment? Fire. Fire. That goes back to what you were saying. How do you get gold that now is pure? Oh, that's so good. You got to burn it. Hallelujah. We, last Sunday, you sang over and over, fire, fire. What you're really <laughs> praying for and singing is judgment, judgment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you really want judgment? <laughs> I want to be pure. So yeah. But if you, judgment. that's it. Understand that God's judgment in your life Brings yeah. purity, but yeah. purity brings what? Tests and trials. Well, it brings tests and trials, and we'll see that because we're coming into blessed are the persecuted. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, ladies. Anybody here cook? Sometimes. You do. <laughs> Joanna you do. does. I can't. You do. Oh, Joe. Good. What do you cook? What's your favorite dish? Oh, she's got lots of them. She does. Okay. She's our, With that in she's mind. She's our main food truck. We're not just skinny today. <laughs> it, it, Chicken parmesan. Chicken parmesan? Yeah. Oh, starting to salivate already. 
Okay, now, you pull out this dish. Okay, a dish. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a glass dish. Okay. You use it a lot. In fact, do you have a son? Three. Three sons. And are they dishwashers? No, I have Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's the dishwasher. Joel is a dishwasher. But this is a dish that Joel did not wash. Because, you know, it's really interesting. In Scripture, it says, as a man, man, and it is man, gender, wipeth a dish. Why do we have men wipe dishes? And why is it that a woman would not necessarily wipe that particular dish? Pardon? To be of help. To be of help. Joel, you finally do something that helps. <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. What can Joel do, probably, that you would have a hard time doing when it comes to washing pots and pans and dishes? He has more strength. He has more strength. That's what it means. He's going to scrub more. No, it doesn't mean you couldn't do it. You certainly too. can. But... Joel probably can do it a little bit faster if it's got a lot of grease, a lot of grime on it. But the plate that you're pulling down, that dish, that favorite dish, it's great for chicken parmesan. It's got filth on it. It's got some old pit chicken parmesan baked on, never cleaned off. Now, what would you use? A brillo. Would you use that one? <laughs> no. Why not? Well, I wouldn't want that in my dish. You wouldn't want that in your dish. In other words, it would have to be a clean dish. It would have to be. That's right. What if the utensils? Have you ever gone to a restaurant and no. seen somebody else's egg on the tongs of the fork? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what does that do to you? Yeah. Yeah, right. I believe in the restaurant. Yeah, I don't even trust the next fork. You no, want. you got it. You got it. <laughs> so you get the idea, don't you? Yes. That if you're clean, then you are a vessel meat for the master's use. Make sense? So blessed are the pure in heart. David prayed. Now remember, David is the shepherd boy. David is the giant killer. And David is a king. But in Psalm 51, David had sinned. And that's his confession, Psalm 51 and Psalm 32. In se Are you sneezing again? <laughs> Have you had your COVID test? She has, she has uh, yeah. morning allergies. Yeah, morning allergies. Okay, well then that's... M-O-R-N. That, that, that's understandable. Yes. Thank you, thank you. It, it really is. You can say... She might... She's my daughter. What can I say? I like it's a little cold. God bless you. And I, I hope that you're. I hope you will get to noon soon. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. where were we? Um, David confessing. Oh, yeah. That's it. Thank you. So David is now, and this is Second Samuel, chapter eleven. Easy to remember. You got two in front of. Samuel 2 after because there were two that got into trouble. Remember? And remember, it's not the apple on the tree, it's the pear on the ground. Yeah, okay, that's how you can remember those things. Okay, so it's 2 Samuel, it's chapter what? 11. And of course, he had seen Bathsheba. He lost after Bathsheba. She was bathing on the top of her roof. He was able to see. Nobody else could. And he devised a way to be with her. He realized he had sinned. And what does he say? Create in me a clean heart. Now, it's really, really interesting. Why does he say create? And the word is bara. The second word in the Hebrew Bible is bara. Hmm. Bereshit is the first word. That's where you got the first word in the Bible that you have is Genesis. 
That's because it's a Greek word, which means beginning. So the genealogy is your beginnings. And so if the genesis of something, it's the beginning of something. But the second word is bershit bara. Bara means to create. The same God who created the heavens and the earth. Now David is saying, you have to create. Yeah, yeah. If any man is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. A new creation. Who created you? Christ. Out of, that's right. Christ is the creator. He is God who has created you. Yeah. But notice, when you create something, what are you starting with? Nothing. You're starting with nothing. So that's why there has to be then a purification. Lord, you create in me a clean heart and a what kind of spirit? That's right. So, has that happened to each of us? Yes. Okay. Now, if that be the case, and I have a, a pure heart, then what does that really look like? How, how will I know I have a pure heart? What does it really mean? If I have a heart and it's 100% gold, it, it has no dirt, from a pan. What does that really mean? How can I put this in words that that, that I you understand? I think you'd be you'd feel bad when you see sin. It would hurt your heart. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And and that's that's good. That's right. You. I think a pure heart is like your innocence. Okay, you're innocent. Yeah. Okay. It means you're in right standing and you're walking in the image of Jesus. Okay. Good. Good. Valentine's Day comes up in February. Usually around the 14th, right? Yeah, sometimes it gets over. Yeah, it's like April Fool's. It's usually on the <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, just checking to see who's awake. That extra hour, maybe we need it too. All right, so with any of that, we, we, we got Valentine's. But, a, but somebody sends a Valentine's card to you, to my one and only. How does that make you feel? Special. Especially, uh, unless you were in high school and you discovered all the other girls got the same car. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's what the word pure means. It means that you have a singular heart. Okay. A singular heart. So you were right, Carol. It does mean that. But it means you have the heart that God has. If you have a pure heart, there's only one that is holy and perfect. And that's God. But the only way in which you can have a pure heart is if you receive Jesus. And where did you receive Jesus? In your head? In your, heart. In your toes? <laughs> in your heart. So if a man does say to you, Joe. Yes. No, don't say yes. Yeah, I haven't even proposed. I've been waiting a long time. Yes. All right, let's go to Kelly. <laughs> Okay, so if a man says, I love you with all my heart, what is he really saying? I don't know, I've never heard it. <laughs> I love you too. Like yeah. It's so, like mind, will, and yeah. emotion. Okay, good, good. Where is your heart located? In the middle. Right it's right here in the middle. Do you know your heart? Take your fist. It's the like size that. Of your Just like that. Okay, that's the size of your heart. That is the size of your heart. And that little heart will pump about 100,000 liters every day. Thank you. That is quite amazing. On the right side of your heart, it's taking the, uh, the, the uh, blood from the lungs which has all the impurities. And it's pumping it so that the CO2 and the impurity... Bless you. 
do you want to teach this class? You could teach on blessing, and it would be nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> I'm only teasing. You know that I am, right? Okay, good, good, good. So it goes from there to the right side. The right side is where the blood that is pure is and oxygenated. It goes from the from the lungs, and it goes from the left side, which is why if you're feeling any pain on the left side, you're probably having a heart attack. Wow. Okay, if you have tingling in your left fingers and it's all the time, it's not because it went to sleep because you laid on it, it's just tingling all the time, more than likely you're having some heart failure. Wow. Okay, that's the left side is the oxygenated blood and all of that is going then to pump the oxygen through your body. That's a physical picture of the spiritual reality of what your heart does, which is why what you said, Carol, was so powerful, because we gotta get rid of the impurities. The heart is the place where you're making choices. And you're making choices about what you've been listening to, what you're reading, who you're associating with, what you put in your body, what you reject, what you used to do, and what you will never do again. Yeah, yeah. All of that is the right side of the heart that is purifying and rejecting the evil. And on the right side, you're pumping in life. Okay. Huh. Wow. So you said your heart is the place where you are making your choices. That's right. It's a place of choices. Your head, you're, re, you're tr being transformed by the renewing of your mind. But your mind is what now are thoughts. But you can choose what you're going to think. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can read the Bible and you can say, this Bible is transforming my thoughts. Absolutely. But I have made a choice to read the Bible. Amen. Right. And thereby, if I choose to read Playboy instead, I'm looking over here. If I choose to look at Playboy instead, do they still publish that? No. We don't have That's that a name. right answer. <laughs> Thomas doesn't know. That's a good answer. I actually don't know either. But if we choose, you see how that affects our head. It's yeah. the choice. Yeah. In the Hebrew, the word for heart is lev. And it's lamed bet. The Lamed is a shepherd's staff. The Bet is the shelter or place. Thank you so much. The place where we live. Who's your shepherd? That is where your heart is. So we have to receive Jesus into our heart sense into our place of choice. so consequently if I'm trying to think the outline did we cover do you think enough about what is meant by pure what is meant by art yeah okay what does it mean to see God mm. I thought nobody could look at God and live that's what God said to Moses mm. so if that be the case why is Jesus promising if we have a pure heart we'll see God mm. well We'll live right on earth. We'll live, we'll try to do what's right here. And then, so then when we get to heaven, eternal life. Okay, but it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall. So they yeah. shall in the future? They, well, no, shall now. In the present. Shall now. Yeah. So can we see God now? Yes. 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 Oh, help me. How? Ooh, Pardon? Through the word. Through the word, first of all, remember the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we what? Beheld, beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thomas, the other Thomas, the doubting Thomas, not you. Thomas said, show us the Father. Jesus says, Thomas, have I not been with you such a long time and you still don't know? He that hath seen me. Have seen the Father. The Father. Wow. So I remember some of the Rach said, think for devotions, I don't remember. But anyways, 
like we could see the glory of God. We could see God's face through people, you know, right. through even like in praise and worship. I remember, I, mean, I think Wednesday, I saw the glory of God when I see the new sisters start to move, start to praise and worship God. You saw one of them speaking tongues. And I think I saw the face of God in that situation. Well, yeah. Good, good. Look at the person next to you on either side. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are you looking at the body of Christ? Yes. Yes. Are you, if you're looking at the body of Christ, are you looking at the working of Christ in them, the hope of glory? Huh. Yeah. Yes. It is. It really is. And what is so, I, I just find this so exciting. Do you guys, I, I hunch you know Robert Browning? <laughs> you see, this guy's really good on literature, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Robert Browning. <laughs> he, he was he was the other one. It, one of the one of the famous quotes that's often quoted of him. It's a very long poem. It's about six pages long, wow. and it, it it says, "Grow old with me. The best is yet to be." Okay, he's the one that said that. But he wrote this in the Bonnie Briar Bush. It's it's a poem. And you understand why it's called that. He says, every bush is a flame of God. Yeah, yeah. But only those who stop and wait see it. That's the great. The rest pick blackberries. <laughs> wow. You get it? Yes. The rest pick blackberries. The believer with a pure in heart sees God working. In everything. Yes, yes, yes. In everything. You look at a brother and you see Christ in them. And as I was praying for you, Thomas, I'm impressed by the diligence, by the, the, the desire, the passion you have to know God's word. Yes. And I see Christ in you. And I'm not just stopping with you, but it's seen in every single believer that is growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ. Yeah. Moses turns and sees what that causes him to stop and have a conversation with God. Yeah. He sees a bush. And what was so unusual? You've seen lots of bushes. But it was a burning bush. That's why Browning said, every bush is a flame of God. Moses stops because the bush is burning, but sometimes that happens in the desert. Things are very, very dry. You have a lightning strike, hits a bush, catches fire. But this bush was unusual. What caused Moses to see a bush that was burning? What caused him to stop? It didn't burn up. Ah, so you guys were singing last week, fire. Are you burning up? No, on the you're inside. Not. You can be on fire and not be consumed. Oh, wow. And that's what this is. Blessed are the pure in heart. It's not just simply God has refined you. He's continuing to refine you. Jesus, as John the Baptist actually said, I will baptize you yes. with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Did you want to say something? No, I just have my arms up perceiving what you're saying. <laughs> good, good, Eric, good. Yes. You know, you're saying I'm seeing God in all the Christians, but after 9-11, I have, as lots of people do, problems with certain, you know, people from different countries. And the Lord told me I created those people. That's right. You know, you need to see me in them, and you wow. need to have compassion and pray for them. Absolutely. Because they're made in my image. Just like you, are. you got it. And, and Carol, that is it. Because to, if, if we look at a bush, a bush that has no soul, a bush not made in the image of God, and we can see God at work in that bush, then how can we not see him? In the woman on the street, or the man on the street, or right, the right, child. Right, right, right. Each one of us. But even Jesus it, it tells in the parable, tend the bush that doesn't have fruit. You know, oh yeah. You know, don't don't get Prop rid of it. Tend it. You know okay. that's where you know even if we never see the fruit, we well, still it's still. Our that, that's exactly right. Yeah. The word "see" in Greek okay. is "horao," 
The word harao, there's, there's about five words in Greek. Greek is a very precise language, so if I said, I saw you the other day, yeah, you're thinking, yeah, well, you saw me, but I didn't see you, and therefore, you know, what was the value of seeing? There's a word for that, it would be blepo. They have another word, thoreo, the word is like theater. So I get the whole panoramic view. But that's not the word it's used, it's harao. And the word means to see and understand, mm -hmm. to perceive. It is more than just looking and seeing the outward form of a person, but to see Christ in them, or to see how God is at work, yeah. to realize that God is not out there somehow or another once in a while engaged <laughs> in his creation instead his fingerprints are all over your life yeah wow he said in the parables that he's going to speak these things he's going to say these things and not all will understand or perceive it you know but those that have the heart of the father will see and it's into the spiritual realm that you see and the natural is basically to separate the wheat from the chaff. Amen. So what can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood. blood. Oh. And that brings us to this, doesn't it? Jesus took bread. And it's so interesting. It is Paul that writes 1 Corinthians chapter 10. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, brokenness. Sin had entered into the heart of Judas, and Satan had entered in. Wow. Jesus takes bread, and he gives thanks for it, he blesses it, he breaks it, he gave it, and who did he give it to first? Judas. Oh, wow. Judas. Purposely. There you go back to blessed of the merciful. He gave himself even for Judas, which is why what you said, Carol, is so important. To love, not just the believers and do a, you know, check, hey, did you accept Jesus? Well, how did you know? And so on and so forth. Right, right, You're not right. giving them a theology test. You love people regardless. And Jesus loved Judas, yeah. knowing full well what he was going to do. And then Judas took, remember it was the first portion of the matzah, which, by the way, is kosher, the kosher heart without leaven. I love it. And he left. And the scriptures in Luke say it was night. That's what happens when you leave Jesus. You leave the light, you're in the darkness. Yeah. Amen. And then he took the cup. And the cup had in it what? Wine. Wine. And the wine symbolized what? The blood. The blood. What can wash away your sin? Nothing, nothing. You know the song? Yeah. yeah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thomas, would you lead us in prayer? Father oh, God, we, we thank you, Lord. We come to you with a thankful heart this morning, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord. Your word that's been in, embedded in the spirit of Pastor Harry. And that he is just a willing vessel, Lord, to allow you to flow through him, Father God. So we just thank you, Father God, for today, Lord, for the air and breath in our lungs, Father God. And we thank you for this complicated system of a body that you created that everything works perfectly and, and in line 
Yes. With your will, Father God. We thank you for the service that's going to come forth and the word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that it falls on great ground and not stony ground, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, Father God, that we are not only hearers of your word today, Lord, that we apply it and we are doers of your word as well. Lord, we just love on you this morning. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.